what has made me a scratch golfer twice in my life? Beyond just hitting the ball better with less dispersion left and right. That is very obvious. Beyond just hitting the ball better, there are 15 things we do as scratch golfers unrelated to mechanics that bring our scores down to level par. The first thing we do as scratch golfers is chase position, position, position. A position to approach the green in regulation, to be able to hit that green. Big distance is great, but big distance without control and out of position is terrible. It puts you in places you have to hit rescue shots. When we chase position, we want to put the ball in a place that can approach the green and then on that approach shot, we go for the position that's going to give us the best chance of a putt or an easy chip to get up and down and save the par. I'll take mini driver here because the driver is going to go in the water on the right and we don't want any of that. And I think that's absolutely stinky winky money. What helped me get to scratch golf is to play simple shots, hitting the shot I can hit nine times out of 10 using one shot shape. We're just taking the ego out of club selection. Yeah, we've got 140 yards slightly uphill, a little bit into the breeze. I'm gonna club up two clubs here with an eight iron instead of my normal pitching wedge. If I have an ego, I can't do that. I have to keep proving to myself my pitching wedge is my 140 yard club. I have to prove it to my playing partners. But inside there's turmoil. When I take the ego out of club selection, and I hit something I can do nine times out of 10, I get closer to the hole on the greens more often, giving me better chances of getting up and down or two putting for pars. To be a scratch golfer, we have to humble ourselves. You have to understand that things can go very bad and things will go very good. There's always a flux, there's always a balance, but the overarching feeling you have to have a feeling of superiority. You know that you're taking less strokes, so you take more time on your shots. You reset. You carry yourself like a scratch golfer. In my videos, I may look a certain way, absolutely dripping with drip, but when I'm playing golf, I feel I am superior to everybody. Not in a bad way, but in a way where I'm gonna take my time to get the shot right. Oh yeah. And just first green of the day. Boom, good par. And then we shut the hole off, get to the next hole. To become a scratch golfer, I had to learn to commit and stay present in every single shot. Staying present sounds like a woo-woo term about yoga in Bali, eat, pray, love. No, being present means just not being distracted. And on every shot, you have to be in the shot, completely focused and 110% committed to your shot. 95% is not good enough to be committed to that shot. It's not gonna give you the best result. You'll get a good enough result, but often a little lapse can destroy a hole and bring your score up. Confidentiality plus comfort equal commitment. You visualize your shot and you decide, that's what I'm doing. Any 50-50 in your head, 75-20, not good enough. Get to 110%. I committed to the fader and it came with a draw ski. That's life. We're not chasing metrics at this stage. What we're chasing here is understanding. So if I don't commit to a shot, I can look back and say, why? What happened? How do I fix that? These are the things we look at. Then the next step is now with this shot. I know I want to hit this on the green. I'm not chasing a green in regulation. What I'm doing, along with the ethereal part of finding out why and how to fix things, now I'm learning about the lie of the ball. When I learn about the lie of the ball, it has nothing to do with a shot or a metric. It's completely reading the situation. And reading situations and understanding why things happen is key to scratch golf. In this fairway, yeah, it's a fairway lie. You think it's easy, right? The mower went that way over there, meaning that if it goes away from us, we're hitting down the grain of the grass, nice slidey action through the turf, nice solid divot. The grass is this way now because the mower came this way on this line. So the grass is into me. When I hit the shot, the club may get stuck, especially because of the short shot inside 150. I must understand that I didn't hit a shit shot. It's the turf. Then I understand that it's gonna make a pop-up shot, which will still land okay, because I know my landing area is an upslope. But then I also have to look at the situation of the slope that I'm on, which is an upslope. So it's gonna launch the ball a bit higher. And I'm hitting it onto a raised green, which is going to interrupt the ball flight. So instead of hitting a normal shot here, I have to recalibrate a little bit and know my distance and know my shot shape in every situation to be able to play scratch golf. If I play copy paste golf here, not understanding the lie of the ball, which is foundational to every single shot, 
I can't be scratch. What I'm going to do here is hit my 48 degree and understand that if I hit it okay, I'm going to hit the front edge of the green and let it roll up. And if I hit it really well, I might not hold in line with the pin. It might land there and scoot on because of the lie situation and the landing area combined with the wind. To be a scratch golf, you have to be patient because you're putting into place processes and thought patterns that will eventually give you the metrics you desire and the score you desire. Everything is about patience and waiting for the putts to drop. The ball striking is going to be good, it's going to be bad, but most of the time it's inside 100 yards that's going to keep that score down. And once you play good and you strike it good, the only differentiating factor is when the putts drop. And some days you're going to hold nothing, other days you're going to hold everything. And that's when you shoot your best scores. Because the best ball strikers win when their putter is the best. Stay patient. We have to avoid the negative death spiral when we're not going like deep. We're not scoring. We're not dropping the putts. Patience. Keep doing the process. Every hole is a process. Every round is a process. Well, this is not Augusta. <laughs> To become a scratch golfer, one of my rules was always only go for par fives in two if it's within a certain distance. So I would set the distance limit, normally about 220 with my seven wood. Outside of that, I'm not going for it unless there's some clear area I'm not going to get penalized or have to pitch over bunkers. So on this par five, I'm not going to go for it in two unless I can reach there with my mini driver or my seven wood. Anything in between, anything 50-50, we're just going to lay up to a great position to get the ball close for the bird ski. I talked about patience, doing the processes, getting the ball in the right position, things are going to happen for you. The other side of that is not trying to predict your score before the hole is over. Of course we want a birdie here. If we don't get a birdie, are we going to descend into a negative death spiral of negative emotions? No. We move on to the next hole. So we don't want to predict our score either in a good situation, when I have an approach which I could make on the green and maybe make an eagle, and if I don't do it then I go crazy. You never know when you're going to save a hole. It takes one good shot to save a hole. And a scratch golfer will think, if I get the ball there, I can get up and down, save this par or bogey. So we are 242 down breeze. And the rule is I can only go for these shots with the club if it's comfortable. I'm not going to try pump a seven wood and try to get an extra few yards in it. I'm going to accept if I hit my seven wood down breeze and catch it real good, I could hit the front edge. If I don't catch it perfectly, I know I'm going to still be short right and have a pitch onto the green. You know Tanglewood. I got a little Tinglewood after that shot. Here I am at the back edge of the green. Didn't realize I made it this far. And here is where we can say to the naysayers, stick it in the poopo. Because the scratch golfer understands the vitality of the chipping game and the short game inside 100. Because when we get greenside on par fives, we want to get up and down for, for birdies. Maybe we'll make pars, but we want to get up and down. When you miss the greens, you want to get up and down to save par. Because as a scratch golf, you're only hitting nine or ten around. What are you doing on the other eight or nine? You have to get up and down to save those pars. In my opinion, nine times out of ten, I think I'm going to take the seven iron toe down. And we've stuck that to about three and a half feet. This is where your first putt is going to finish on a long lag putt, where your chips will finish, or an easy pitch shot, or a tough chip shot. They're going to finish you know, five, six feet, four feet away from the hole. You want to be money with these. And that's just as simple as practicing one foot putts. That's all I ever did. Let's be real, you're not going to play your best golf if your body's in bad condition. I found my hip flexors were very tight, they were affecting my lower back. And when I'm stiff in the lower back hip complex, how am I going to rotate into my right hip with everything here being sore and tight? So the best golf I ever played when I was 20 scratch handicap and when I'm now nearly 40 scratch handicap is just being loose and limber. 
doing some stretching and mobility work. I used to be a sprinter when I was 20, used to run the 100 in 1065. And nowadays I don't work out that much. I just stay loose and mobile by just working on the hip flexors and keeping the shoulders from being in too much pain from working at the computer for so long. Because to play scratch golf, you have to be on. You can't just go be off and then switch on at the ninth hole because that's when you stay at a five, six handicap. It's all about can you hit the ball to where you're looking. It's not about bash and hope with a long distance. The key fundamental to become a scratch golfer is to hit where you want the ball to go by having better technique and better strike. By default, when you have better technique and strike, you gain distance that you're able to use that distance. Now, I play golf in spurts and bursts. I won't play for four months, then I'll play for two months. Then I won't play for a month, then I'll play for a month straight, four days a week. And in that period, I notice my scores just get better and better as I become more comfortable on the course. So I bring you these videos when I'm playing well, because those few rounds symbolize your A game. And the A game is what brings that handicap down to scratch. The rest of the year, you're playing with your C and D game, which means you have to, at the flick of a switch, realize you're not on form, get the ball in play as easy as you can, get it up near the greens, and then scramble your little ass off. You have to flick that switch quickly when it's not in your purple patch, your A form, your B form. When it's in your C and D form, you have to make that switch flick and then become a scrambling man. There's no two ways about it. The short game inside 100 is what's going to save your score. That's very weak though, huh? I was a bit scared, I don't know why I looked downhill. What the hell is that about? Anyway, we take a par with GTFO. Oh man alive. Ooh. Super important if you want to be a scratch handicap to have go-to clubs. On the tee, sometimes your tee club is going to go off the boil, you're going to stick it back in the bag. Remember, I have a rule, Two-way miss in the first four holes with the driver. Back in the bag, we're going fairway woods or irons, whatever's going to work. Then when you have a go-to club go off the boil, you need a final backup club. If you have no final backup club, you just have to accept today you're going to shoot over 80. It's not going to be scratch golf. So from here, let's say we're into the breeze, 210 yards. Very nice to hold my seven wood up in the air and make it land soft on the green. Very nice. But let's say it's off the boil and I can't predict it's going to do that. And I'm scared of going in that bunker on the left. As I hit that seven wood up in the air, it goes higher. The wind pushes it back, makes it come down steeper. Lands in that bunker, gives me a freaking fried egg lie. I need to go to my go-to club. What's my go-to club here? I can go to nine wood. Even nine wood could go high up and then, you know, not be controllable. So I want to drop back to my favorite club, my six iron, leave me a pitch up the right side of the green there. And we just adapt our strategy as we go. If things go off the boil, I'm not saying this is off the boil today, but let's imagine. Leg hook. Imagine all the people living in misery. <laughs> That's a prediction of the lie there. I should have talked more about that. But now we have a pitch shot onto the green. And that's absolutely money. Not every shot's going to go great. Now, when we practice the short game a lot, you develop what we call imagination. But imagination in golf is only having a lot of shots that you've seen in your arsenal in the practice range to bring to the golf course. It has nothing to do with like creativity. It purely has to do with how many shots you've seen in practice. Then when you see it on the golf course, now you can execute it. Here I see the exact shot I learned by doing the Charlie Chaplin pitching to pick up distance and improve my swing and get better impact position. I see the exact same shot. Just directly at the flag. Easy game. Well, we didn't make the bird. That's cool. Now the final part is to assess your round. Assessing your round tells you what's happening and how you can fix something. Don't ignore, don't laugh it off, don't just commiserate. Look at it and say, wow, why did that happen? How do I fix it? Oh, I see a pattern emerging. Why am I doing that? Oh, it's a mental error. I can do this. Oh, it's a chipping technique problem. I can do that. And then go work on it. This is very important. If you don't reflect, you cannot improve. We're not trying to chase metrics. We're trying to understand the why we did something and then how to fix it.